Since the beginning of Paragon, there's always been this one core issue within the community, something that almost everyone unanimously agrees on. It's probably the only thing that has remained the same throughout the numerous iterations of Paragon, and that's matchmaking. Now I'm sure if I asked you whether you thought matchmaking was good in Paragon, the answer without hesitation would be a no. So why is matchmaking considered so bad, and is it really a matchmaking problem? And what is the new monolithic matchmaking going to bring to the table to rectify these issues? I thought to close out the year we'd take a look at just that. With the current matchmaking there's a lot of fundamental issues, however two of the biggest complaints are stacks and being matched with bad players. The first one is 100% being addressed, with Epic only allowing a solo or duo in the ranked version of monolithic matchmaking, and the latter I'm not so sure is a matchmaking issue, nor will new matchmaking solve it, at least in the short term. The reason I think that is, is because the player population is way too small. What you often find is that players can range from 100 to 200 different in ELO, and while ELO is far from being accurate, it's all we really have to go on. Now 200 ELO is a huge difference, and at higher MMRs you're looking at 300 to 400 plus sometimes. So what does this have to do with the player population? Well, an article posted by Epic a while back details how their matchmaker works. I'll simplify it for you. As you queue, the game expands your matchmaking rating over time or MMR. So, for example, you're a 1500 ELO player. In the first, say, two minutes, it looks for 1500 ELO players plus minus 30 ELO. So anything from 1470 to 1530. But when your player population is so low, there might not be any players that fill this bucket. And so it expands and expands and expands. So you can see after a certain in duration it's now looking at say plus minus 100 elo while these numbers are far from accurate only epic really know what they are but you can see the idea behind the matchmaking or at least how i understand it from this article posted a while back the longer you queue the more likely you are to have opponents or allies that are further away from your elo bucket so when you implement a new matchmaker you don't magically create more players in these buckets so you can see how this issue still exists if you thought matchmaking would instantly bring better players you're probably wrong they aren't created out of thin air. As the player population grows, however, you'd start to see more and more people fill these buckets, which means that hopefully the matchmaker won't be expanding too far to find you a game, and therefore your allies and enemies should all be evenly matched. It might sound like I'm being negative, but I think there's plenty of positives from monolithic matchmaking. I'm sure we're going to see some improved features, like being able to select your role prior to queuing, and then hopefully the game will match you so you can play your preferred role. This is pretty much how it goes in other MOBAs, and if everyone is playing their preferred role, you're more likely to get people who know what they're doing, rather than some guy who mains carry but is forced to jungle, having only played 5 games in that position before. So from this scenario, I think that's how you increase the quality of games. There's also the issue of you getting draft dodge. What currently happens when you get dodged is the matchmaker puts you back into the queue at the bottom, but with monolithic matchmaking, you're most probably going to be put right at the top as a priority. Now this hasn't been 100% confirmed by Epic, and even if it has, with matchmaking being in development for so long, not every feature is guaranteed. The new matchmaking in fact already exists, it's currently implemented in Fortnite's Battle Royale, probably to stress test it under a larger population. What I do know is that Fortnite has no ranked matchmaking, you're put in with anyone and everyone, but consider a larger amount of players play Fortnite, it's nice to see the matchmaker hold up, as one day you'd expect Paragon to hopefully have a player base of that size at least. I don't really have an issue with matchmaking apart from stacks, sure I don't like being matched with bad players, but this isn't a Paragon only issue. I've played Overwatch to what I would consider a decent rank, peaking at Masters which is the top 2%, and even there I find players who are completely lost or seem like they don't belong in at this level. They might be having a bad day or try something new. The matchmaker however doesn't know, it just sees the number and tries to pair him with other numbers that are similar. Now I know we can't really compare Overwatch and Paragon, but to give you a bit of perspective, Master players are the top 2% in Overwatch. It's an incredibly difficult rank to achieve and I consider it a very high level of gameplay. In Paragon however, 1564 is the top 2%, not what I personally call a high level, and here lies the problem. There simply aren't enough good players in Paragon. There's what, 6309 players above this rank. If we exclude Smurfs, we're easily down to at least 4000 players, and then we're split across 3 regions with NA dominating most likely. I have no idea what the split is, but 4000 players split across 3 regions means that you're looking at a very, very small player pool. 
I have no idea how accurate Agora.gg is, but it seems to give a fair indication, and the conclusion that I draw is, apart from running into stacks, the new matchmaker isn't going to give you better teammates, only a larger population combined with the new matchmaking is. There might be more to the matchmaker that we don't know, like how the seeding will work, how it calculates your matchmaking rating, if it's only win based, or is there an algorithm that determines your performance. These all could influence the quality of games depending on how you seed. So while I don't think a new matchmaking algorithm alone solves the problem, I think it's one step forward and a huge piece of the puzzle. Let's face it, no game has perfect matchmaking and Paragon isn't an exception. Smash that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Like I said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for all the latest Paragon content. Hope you guys have a wonderful new year and I'll see you in 2018.